Good evening. Looks as if Nova Scotia's justice minister says sheriffs were not following proper policies and procedures the day a prisoner they were transporting from New Brunswick escaped. The minister won't say whether anyone will lose their job, but the president of the union representing the sheriff says she's not even sure they should be reprimanded. Here's CTV's Kayla Hounsel. Nearly two months after the prisoner escaped, the report as to how he did it is in, and the Nova Scotia government is pointing fingers. I'm very disappointed that it happened. The report points to a number of things that went wrong when Mark Pellerin escaped, but the Justice Minister says chief among them is that the deputy sheriffs didn't complete a required risk assessment. This was a late-in-the-day transport, and therefore they did not do that, so that was a... That was a shortcoming in this case, a mistake was made. Their boss points out a risk assessment would have alerted sheriffs that the prisoner had escaped before. I wouldn't say corners were cut. I believe they were very busy. They missed a step. They missed a critical step. The report also indicates Pellerin was able to free himself because of a unique ability to contort his hand to get out of his wrist restraints. He was then able to break his leg irons and that equipment has now been sent back to the manufacturer to determine whether it malfunctioned. The president of the union representing the sheriff says the report should not have been released until that determination was made. And that's not all. What risk assessments? Are they being done on a regular basis? Are the staff being trained to do them? Do they have the time to do them? The report also reveals more about exactly what happened that December day. At 3 p.m., the sheriffs arrive at the correctional facility in New Brunswick to transport Mark Pellerin to Nova Scotia for court. 25 minutes later, Pellerin is placed inside the secure transport vehicle with restraints on his wrists and ankles. At 5.35, they arrive in Truro to switch vehicles. Three minutes later, a deputy sheriff opens the secure door and Pellerin jumps out. Four deputy sheriffs, all in close proximity, start chasing him. One minute goes by and two of them stop running and chase Pellerin in vehicles. Six minutes later, they request the help of the Truro police, unable to locate the prisoner until three days later. The sheriff's physical fitness now also being questioned. We're going to be reviewing the policy on that. Everybody who enters the sheriff's service does go through a physical fitness test. And I double checked on that, but it is not done repeatedly. Neither the sheriff's services director nor the minister will say whether anyone will lose their job. And adding to the list of what went wrong here, the closed circuit television inside the sheriff vehicle was broken. The director says they were using it for safety because it's a four wheel drive vehicle, but the NSGEU says they should never have been using it to begin with. Again, their boss says that's no excuse and someone should have physically turned around to make sure the prisoner was still in the restraints before they opened that door, Bruce. All right, thank you, Kayla. You're welcome. CTV's Kayla Hounsel reporting live tonight.